So starting out talking about just the key characteristics of Mercury, um, it is a rather small planet um, as far as terrestrial worlds go, especially. It's the smallest of the terrestrial planets. It's the smallest of any of the planets. Um, it has a relatively high density though. So it's not quite as dense as Earth, but it's up there. Um, and its orbital period and rotation period have an interesting relationship to each other. The orbital period is 88 days. Um, the rotation period is 58 days. So it makes three rotations for every two orbits that it does. Um, it doesn't have hardly any axial tilt. So as you can see, its axis orbital tilt is exactly zero degrees. Um, so it orbits in such a way that it wouldn't experience seasons in the same way that Earth does. All right, but its orbital period and rotation period, the relationship between those makes the surface conditions rather interesting. So it basically spins around three times for every two times it makes one orbit. And that can be a little bit hard to picture. Um, I like to draw kind of a sketch and, and try to figure out what that orbit would be like. Um, but if you're a visual thinking person, you might enjoy this video. Um, so the black dot is started out at perihelion facing the sun. And now you can see at about two thirds of one orbit, it's now facing in the same direction it started. When it makes one orbit, it's now facing away from the sun. And it's gonna take another complete orbit before it is facing the sun again. So it's, it might be a little bit weird as a result to define what we would call a solar day on Mercury, the time that it takes for the sun to return to the same position in the sky. So for most planets, we would say, you know, their, their orbital, or sorry, their rotation period is generally their equal to their solar day. Um, but for Mercury, that's not the case because of this, what we call spin orbit resonance. All right, so uh, because of its rather slow rotation compared to its year, um, the surface temperature has high highs and low lows. You know, one, one side of the, of the planet stays facing the sun for a very, very long time while the other side is shrouded in complete darkness. So the surface temperatures uh, swing in a given location between some very extreme extremes. Um, the messenger spacecraft from NASA um, has imaged the surface of Mercury and detected water ice within permanently shadowed craters. So this is exactly the same sort of situation as we see on the moon, which has a very small amount of water locked away in ice in its permanently shadowed craters as well. So there is some survivability for water here on the surface, but not much. So as we know, the, the density of mercury is very high, meaning that it has a rather high fraction of metal inside it. Um, so it has a very thin mantle compared to the mantle of Earth. Um, and th this could be the result of a giant collision in Mercury's past that tore off a bunch of its mantle much in the same way that that sort of collision created our moon. So this is a distinct possibility. Um, we'll see some other evidence for that idea later today. Because it has a um, metallic core and it rotates, it can produce a very weak magnetic field, um, but this is nowhere near the strength of the magnetic field of Earth. So question for you, what else must be true about its core? Okay, um, I see a split between two and four, which makes sense. So yes, the core must be liquid in order to support having a magnetic field. There needs to be some sort of um, fluid that can conduct electricity. And that's how a magnetic field is created. Thinking back to that video about electromagnetic uh, electromagnets that I showed you. Um, so it's not necessarily liquid simply because it's hot from being near the sun, um, but we know it must be liquid because it has a magnetic field. So if you were thinking, you know, this is the cause of, of this, I see where your mind's at. Um, 
the core is liquid because it hasn't completely finished cooling yet. Okay, so those are the basics about mercury. When we look at mercury's surface, um, here's what we see. First, there is some evidence that mercury has been geologically active in the past. So its surface looks much like the moon, as we already know. Um, and there are some areas where we see lava flows. So this mosaic image is colored to show the composition of different parts on the surface, which you can measure with optical instruments if you have something in orbit around Mercury. Um, so the blue material is um, floor material. So that would be kind of crust material. And the orange is a lava flow that has filled in a giant impact crater. So this is a crater that's 947 miles in diameter with a one mile high rim. So a, an extremely giant basin that then filled with lava after that collision. And then as you can see, it's been recratered um, a number of times since then um, and re-exposed some of that blue um, crust material. Other than this, um, mercury is currently geologically dead. So because of its very thin mantle, um, that mantle doesn't support um, any fluid motion. And so it doesn't have any more volcanic activity. It also doesn't have plate tectonics and there's no evidence that it ever did. All right, um, Mercury, as we know, has lots of craters, but there are many intercrater planes. So similar to the image I just showed you of a uh, lava flow, there are also lava flows that are kind of interspersed between Mercury's um, cratered regions. And these don't always happen in the areas of giant impacts. So it's a lot more intermixed than, for example, the moon's surface. Uh, Mercury also has some features called scarps. And these are kind of like wrinkles in its surface that were created as Mercury uh, shrunk. So as the planet cooled, it shrunk. And these are essentially the wrinkles left over from that process. So um, lots of interesting stuff going on on Mercury's surface. All right, so um, one other re reason that came up for why you would be interested in mapping, when I was looking at this activity, I was very curious about why Mercury had so many areas that were smooth compared to the moon and why they were so well intermixed with its surface instead of, like if you look at the moon, if I showed you an image of a given size, it would look mostly cratered, it would look mostly smooth. Um, the maria are very, you know, localized instead of having lava flows kind of evenly distributed. So I did a little digging online and found this research article back from 2011. Um, but it says basically that the hypothesis is that mercury experienced what they call crustal resurfacing, that just means lava flows, early in its history on essentially a global basis. So that means that the lava flows affected everywhere rather than on the moon, it has mostly cratered regions in the highlands that were never resurfaced. They never got lava flows. So um, this is one reason why you might be interested in crater counting because it can help to tell you what happened in the history of Mercury. It can say, you know, Mercury seems like it had lava flows across its entire surface, whereas the moon did not experience that widespread um, lava flow. So I thought that was interesting. Hopefully adds a little bit more to the story of why we would want to make maps, count craters, things of that nature.